Hi. I, I thought I saw you go up to bed ages ago. What are you doing down here again? Well, you can't sleep? Because of the storm outside? Yeah, it sounds like a bad one. You know, we get thunderstorms a lot here in Whisperwind. It's actually sort of a relief when we do, because, you know, at least it's not a snowstorm, right? <laughs> do you get thunderstorms where you're from? Not really. No, well, that would explain it. I actually had a really hard time falling asleep here when I first moved here a year ago, too. The storms would always keep me up. But, you know, one thing that does always help is a nice glass of soothing herbal tea. Would you like me to make you a cup? Yeah, I think I've got some down here. Okay, sounds good. Two nice clean teacup. Hmm, those look like I'm almost out. Should be enough for a cup or two. I'm just gonna crush it a little bit first. It releases the flavors. There on top of that. That should do it. Some salt water from the stove. There we are. Just have to let that steep for a few minutes. Mm. It looks like I'll have to go visit Farron again soon. I've heard you've had quite the eventful time in this room so far. Did you visit Isabel's shop yesterday, I heard? Yeah? Oh, don't be surprised. News travels fast in a small town, I'm sure you heard. I wouldn't be surprised if all of the Spurwin knows you're here already. Not from me. Just because I work at the root of all gossip doesn't mean I start it. Rude. <laughs> now, Izzy was in here yesterday for a drink before bed. She thanked me, actually, for mentioning her shop to you. Said you made quite the purchase. Probably more than just your own self-inking quill. Well, I'm glad you found some trinkets from her. She doesn't want to offer. Oh, you visited Clea's shop as well? Oh, it's an emporium these days. I suppose that suits it. What did you think of our Clea? <laughs> Eccentric is a good word for her, yeah. <laughs> did she show you any of her magical items? Well, you bought one. What did you buy? The fireball necklace. Mm. You know, that's one of the only things she has in there that still actually works. 
I suppose it wouldn't be a useful trinket for someone traveling far from home by themselves. <laughs> well, I'm glad you found yourself something there. I'm sure that made her happy. All right, your tea's probably ready. See? Smells so good. <laughs> Make sure you drink it nice and slow. Take in that aroma too. Uh, I don't remember exactly what's in it. Farron could tell you, obviously. I know there's some lavender, some spotted toadstool. Oh, and a pinch of dust from the moonflower fairy. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, it's safe for humans. I mean, you wouldn't want to take too much of it. You could sleep for a week. But just a pinch of it. Makes for a very peaceful night's sleep. Now don't fuss. Farron knows what she's doing. Yeah, I do speak highly of her. Why shouldn't I? First of all, she knows her craft. And second, she uses it to help people. Any people. <laughs> yes, I, I have said that she doesn't like strangers, haven't I? But she never refuses to help anyone. She's just not the most open of people, I guess. But she's good. You know, you don't have to take my word for it. You could go see her tomorrow. Yeah. You could get your own sleeping tea. Or even her sleeping draft. That's actually even stronger. Just one drop and it'll knock you out. No matter what nightmare wakes you up in the middle of the night. Yeah, you want to go see her? Sure, yeah, she lives in a cottage just in the forest. It's about an hour's walk, something like that. It's a little bit hard to find. You know, I can draw you a map if you want. Okay, yeah. I've got some paper around here somewhere. Hmm. Here we go. There we are. Let's see. All right, well, first we've got two. Mm -hmm. Panels hollow, obviously. Tree line. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's nothing in the 
do it. Yeah, I'm no artist. Don't laugh at me. But there is some. Um, yeah. Alright, so down here. God, that's the edge of the village. I said I wasn't an artist. Do you want this map or not? Alright, then that's what I thought. Okay, so here is Clea's shop right here. Edge of Whisperwind right there. And over here, these are all of the boulders. A big rock outcropping right by the edge of the trees. You know, this is actually where they first found the magical essence. Yeah, where Penham first led the elves here. We actually call it Penham's Hollow now. So, behind Penham's Hollow, that's where the pathway into the forest starts. Yeah, you can't see the entrance through the trees um, from town. I think Farron likes it that way, honestly. <laughs> but, so you walk through the boulders there to get there. Actually, as you go, you should take a look at the boulders. They have all of these weird markings on them. Cleo says they're ancient elven. <laughs> I didn't even know there was an ancient elven. Shows how much I know. Anyway, so through the boulders you go into the trees. The path is a little bit hard to see, but if you're looking for it, you'll know where it goes. So you'll follow that this way until you get to this big boulder right in the middle of the path and it sort of forks off. Now, I don't know what's down this pathway. It's just sort of an unspoken rule in town that you don't go this way. I'm not really sure. But you're going to follow it around the boulder this way. And then the path picks up over here, okay? So then you keep walking this way until you get to this nice bubbling brook. We call it Farron's Brook in town, but don't tell her that, okay? So when the path meets the brook right here, it's too wide to cross without getting wet and you probably end up slipping before you got to the other side. So instead, you're going to follow the brook up here to the northwest for a while till you see some stepping stones in a little thin area there. And there you can hop across the brook over to the other side where it picks up. It's not that complicated. You'll be fine. That's why I'm giving you this wonderful map. You're welcome. So, past Ferret's Brook, now you're almost there. Just have to follow the path to the northeast for a while. But, on your way, see this big old tree right here? It's a big, fancy looking tree. And it does stand out from the other trees. And if you look at it long enough, it almost looks like it's giving off its own light. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it seems like it almost draws you in. But, this is very, very, very important. Don't touch the big tree. Okay? Don't touch. Don't do it. It's actually a fairy hollow. Fairies do not like it when you touch their tree. You know, fairies, usually they're pleasant enough, but they don't love humans, and they definitely don't like it when you mess with their stuff. So, just word to the wise, don't touch the tree. You know, last spring, they almost went to war with this colony of rabbits that tried to burrow underneath the tree. Oh, they were so mad. <laughs> and they took it out on everyone too, not just the rabbits. You could not walk by the tree without getting pelted with acorns. <laughs> Isabel actually started renting out metal umbrellas to anyone who had to go visit Farron. <laughs> it was a mess. But very entertaining. <laughs> so, anyway. No touching the tree. Got it? Okay, so once you passed the fairy hobble tree, you're almost there. It's just a few more minutes. Just so walking up here and you'll start to see the trees thinning a little bit as you go. And then up a little hill here, and that's Baron's cottage. She's got some gardens over here for all of her herbs. I don't know what she does to those herbs because they're much bigger than any herbs that I've ever seen. But yeah, that's her little cottage right there. It's simple enough, you'll be fine. And I would suggest arriving sometime in mid morning, too early, and she'll be out collecting from her plants and other plants in the forest, and too late, and then you would interrupt her late morning tea. She takes tea very seriously. <laughs> but if you leave here 
you know, early to mid morning. You should be just fine. So there is your lovely mat. You're welcome. Just tie this up for you. Bring her. Where is it? There. I just opened a new bottle of my elderflower ale today. She loves this. And since she gives me the elderflower for free, I send her a bottle now. And then. Probably help smooth her over a little bit too since you're new. Let me just wrap it up for you, okay? And say, you know, I'll grab you a basket too, so you can carry it. If you wouldn't mind, could you take this there for me too and get it filled? It's her sleeplessness tea. This saves me a trip. Since I'm working here, I don't get to get out there very often. Is that okay? Thank you. Perfect. There. All ready for your journey. Right. There we go. Appreciate it. What? Oh, no, no. You're not paying me for the ale. That's for fair. <laughs> she and I have an agreement. Don't worry about it. Mm hmm? I saw that, young. How's that tea working? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like you're almost done with it, too. Good. <laughs> well, you just sit and sip that nice and slow. You know, you'll probably be leaving before I get in tomorrow, before Rosie really needs me. But I look forward to hearing about your journey later. <laughs> yeah. Mm, you do look tired now. <laughs> Good. And lucky for you, it sounds like the storm is letting up a little bit. At least the thunder, anyway. You know, I used to not like the rain, but now that I've lived here long enough, if you learn to listen to the rhythm of the raindrops, it's almost like nature's own little lullaby. Maybe you'll learn to like it too. Anyway, you better scurry on upstairs. I bet you'll be asleep in no time. <laughs> oh, don't worry about the class. I got it. No. You just think pleasant, sleepy thoughts. Alright. <laughs> Good night. See you later.